Hello everyone. Um, welcome to New South Wales mini webinar, Downloading an Image from Collection Search. Now the plan today is simply to provide you with an option to use Collection Search to find images and then to download and name those images just like an archivist would. And I'm going to show you all of those skills and I'm going to show them to you more than once. Now firstly, I'll, I'll go to the end. It's sort of like a flash forward in a movie. Um, if you can see on my desktop there, there's a folder called Downloads. Now, when you start downloading things, you are going to need a place to put them. Um, a desktop is just the simplest one for me today. Now, you'll notice that when I go into that folder, I have a, a long name on an image and I can click on it and it is now something that is on my computer. It's a wonderful image, by the way, I want on my computer and I can use it for other methods. A simple example would be I can edit, go into a paint program. There it is. Shows you how high res it is, by the way, doesn't it? Oh, let's go on those two gentlemen there. Let's say one of them is my um, aunt cousin, three times removed. I can just crop them like so, bingo. And so now that's a new image from an old one. So it shows you that if you download an image, it provides you with options that you can use and has capabilities that I won't cover today because of the nature of the topic, but I'm highlighting that you have um, extra uses. Um, one other thing I thought I would highlight in this flash forward bit of my talk, is you can find things. Now there's only one thing in the folder, but let's say if I put George Street in this little box at the top right, it then highlights the images that have that term there. And so it makes it very easy to find them. So if you decide, and yes, it is addictive. If you decide to download a lot of images over time, you will need a way to find the ones you want. There is one extra thing I will do in this part of the webinar. You can go view, and then large icons, because that, that's another way you can use to just find the ones you're looking for. So enough of the flash forward, we're now going down to the nature of today's topic. So I'll go quickly to the website. Now I actually did a talk in the Manning River one year, and, and when I was looking at Manning River pictures, I thought they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen and in black and white. So, and I just, I'm still amazed at the Manning River's photogenic nature. So we're going there for today's talk. Now, what you're going to, when you just look for something like the Manning River um, or something else, you're going to have a mix of different sorts of records. So we are going to need to tweak the results. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's 1,139 items. So that is a lot of white noise. But if you look one level above, you can see in digitally available, there are 51 digital images. So for us, for us as a, a, a topic today, we're only interested in the digital images. That's where we go. So now uh, I've decided to take them in order. Uh, they're all very gorgeous. And we'll go to the first one. So I just click on the icon or the, or the, uh, the link that was there. This is the item page. You'll be using it for different sorts of things. Notice there, by the way, series link, original prints of photographs used in New South Wales trains. I just thought I'd notice, get you to notice that. But anyway, so these would have been on the walls of trains. So even they recognize how photogenic the Manning River was. I'm clicking on the image and it brings it up. Now this is now we're at the point where you're using it on our website and you're now using it with our tools. And so you don't have that sense of control that I sort of hinted at at the beginning. <coughs> you can use zoom minus, you can twist it, you can expand it. It's kind of a nice one. But I'm with downloading, I'm gonna show you how that you can get that on your own computer. So now we're at the moment where I'm gonna show you how to do the downloading and there's it's simple, it's remarkably simple, but there are some tricks to it that I'm going to teach you on purpose and I've, I recommend it for your long-term use. So this is how you download. You right click and then you go down to the second choice, save as, save image as. Now you have a choice of where to put it on your computer. So this is where I've saved it into a folder called downloads on my desktop. That's just a, a nice quick solution. Um, you can put it anywhere you like on your computer if up to the level of your confidence in terms of on the C drives or the E drive or somewhere else. But the desktop works very well. Um, I would recommend rather than downloads, having a, a topic such as Manning River, if that was your topic for those images, um, because the most important thing about all photographs is context. Now, for example, do you see there that it's offering to save it as an FL141933? Now that means nothing to you, that also means nothing to me. So I'm gonna show you how to get around that and this is the most important thing to learn. I'm going back 
because we provide item listings. And I'm recommending you use both these item listings in your naming of the, of the images, because then you've always got context. First of all, what is that picture of? Well, you've got it, it's the Manning River Wingham. And then the second logical question is, well, where did I get that from? Well, the first one tells you the NRS in our system goes all the way through to a box and a file number. So yes, it tells you exactly where it is. And that way you always know where it came from and what it's about. So this is what I do, and this is what I recommend. I'm highlighting the first string, and you can go right click copy. I'm very fast with shortcuts, Control C does the same thing. But let's go with the right click, because that's the nature of what we've been learning so far. Copy, going back to the image. Now, now I'm gonna do it again. I've right clicked on the image. I'm now saving the image as, and now I'm going to, over that image, that number that really is not to do with any context, I'm gonna put our context by pasting in that string we had, and then adding where, what the image is about. I recommend using our descriptions because they're very well thought through and they come from the record itself. Frankly, you can't do better than that in terms of context. And sometimes there isn't a lot of context and that's all we have. Uh, for example, this image doesn't have a year that I'm aware of. Um, I, I, I personally have no issue with listing it with our series first, but if you want to, you can cut it and you can move it to the end of the line. That's purely a matter of choice. The advantage is if you want all your Manning Rivers to be next to each other, then that would be a little bit better. So I can see why you would want to do that. So then you click save and bingo, it's down. Now I'm going to the desktop on purpose, or here it is, that was a folder. On my desktop, I click on the folder and you can see my Manning River image is now listed next to my flash forward image. And if I wanted to find my Manning River image, I can search up in the right hand corner and it lists them for me and takes me straight to them. There you go. So this is now where I'm, I'm sort of making sure you realize the value of downloading because when you download the images, you have control, um, but it's, it's extremely important that you give context to your photographs. So we'll do another one. No reason to, to not, um, Something I learned when I was a school teacher is you teach, you assess, and then you reteach. So we're now reteaching. I'm going to go to the second item. Interestingly enough, it was on New South Wales trains. I've always liked the photographs on the train, so I should look through that series more often. We go into the image itself. I wonder do you see that little sign there? That's a sign that it's a high-res image that's loading. It's a good thing. Um, occasionally they lock and if they do ring us because we'd like to know that because we can do something to fix it for you. So here we go again and you now know what to do. It's right click with your mouse then you go to the save image as but that's not the way to go because we I forgot a step because I'm busy with the webinar I forgot to do the basics. I went, I'm going back one I'm now going to right click and copy and now I have the context Going back into the image, save as, the context is in, and now the actual, what it is about. Now, because I decided just for the sake of um, variety, giving you the option to put the NRS at the end, I'm doing it again because it doesn't really matter how you organize your photographs, provided you stay consistent all the time. So I've decided for the sake of this small archive, starting with the Manning River, to put the topic first. That's a perfectly legitimate option. Save, and down it goes. If we go to the downloads folder, there they are. And because the George Street one is now unusual, let's say it's a long list, you can just see there on the right-hand side, it's listed all the images with George Street. And I can just click on it and there it is. So that gives you 100% control, which is what you're really, that's the reward from downloading images. Now I can see I'm coming up to full time, but I'm just gonna quickly, with the time I have left, do one more to really reinforce this. First step, is to copy the context. Second step is to bring the image up. Oh, look at this one, lovely and widescreen. They look so good in widescreen. 
right click and save image as. Copy and paste this. I can do it with Control V, but I'm, I'll do it the slower way because to make sure everyone learns one thing. You right click and paste. And then I'm at the start of the year line, I'm putting Manning River, comma, Wingham. New South Wales. And that looks ready to go. So you see, it's quite simple. And the really the, the most important thing is to name the, your images correctly because the worst thing you can do is download an image of a wonderful river and never not be unaware of where it is in five years time when you look at it again. Um, I'm gonna just highlight one issue that can come up with the namings. Um, the, the actual naming of the Microsoft and of Windows, they do not like forward slash, which a lot of our descriptors have. It will put the file as not valid. So I think it's a really important thing that if ever you notice there's a forward slash, just move it and change it to a dash, no problem. So on the note of fixing the only issue that is likely to come up in your journey, I hope you I hope you learned something today. I hope it's valuable to you. And um, I promise you, if I talk to you in a year or two, you'll have thousands. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs>